Hi, my name is Rindy Trainer, and I am a senior at Letourneau University and I'm here today to um, do a lesson on the story of Ruby Bridges. This is my cousin Riley. He's agreed to help me with this lesson and we're being videoed by my daughter Hannah Trainer. She's agreed to help us do that. So, um, Riley, have you ever heard of Ruby Bridges? Uh oh. Can you see this book? What do you think it might be about? Rudy Bridges goes to school. That's excellent. You are exactly right. Yeah, because I can tell these these doors look like school doors. Mm-hmm, they do. Okay. Do you um have you ever everybody knows school doors only have two doors that okay. open. Have you ever heard of the civil rights movement? Uh uh. Okay. Have you ever had to go to a new school? Uh huh. You have? How did that feel? Uh, good. Were you afraid? Me. Nee. So are my friends. Well, in this story, we're going to learn about Ruby Bridges, and she is going to go to school all by herself. Mm. So, let's read this. Ruby Bridges was born in a small cabin near Tylertown, Mississippi. We were very poor. Very, very poor, Ruby said. My daddy worked picking crops. We just barely got by. There were times when we didn't have much to eat. The people who owned the land were bringing in machines to pick the crops, so my daddy lost his job, and that's when we have, had to move. I remember us leaving. I was four, I think. In 1957, the family moved to New Orleans. Ruby's father became a janitor. Her mother took care of the children during the day. After they were tucked in bed, Ruby's mother went to work scrubbing floors in a bank. Every Sunday, the family went to church. We wanted our children to be near God's spirit, Ruby's mother said. We wanted them to start feeling close to him from the very start. At that time, black children and white children went to separate schools in New Orleans. The black children were not able to receive the same education as the white children. It wasn't fair, and it was against the nation's law. In 1960, a judge ordered four black girls to go to two white elementary schools. Three of the girls were sent to McDonough 19. Six-year-old Ruby Bridges was sent to first grade in the William France Elementary School. Ruby's parents were proud that their daughter had been chosen to take part in an important event in American history. They went to church. We sat there and prayed to God, Ruby's mother said, that we'd all be strong and we'd have courage and we'd get through any trouble and Ruby would be a good girl and she'd hold her head up high and be a credit to her own people and a credit to all the American people. We prayed long and we prayed hard. On Ruby's first day, a large crowd of angry white people gathered outside the France Elementary School. The people carried signs that said they didn't want black children in a white school. People called Ruby names. Some wanted to hurt her. The city and state police did not help Ruby. The President of the United States ordered federal marshals to walk with Ruby into the middle school into the school building. The marshals carried guns. That would be kind of Where scary, the wouldn't it? The marshals? Right there. See, they're walking with her and they're trying to protect her from this crowd. That would be scary, wouldn't it? Oh, so that's why they have that's why they have guns. Mm -hmm. So if they pull them up, everybody go like <laughs> If they had to use them, they would. Every day for weeks that turned into months, Ruby experienced that kind of school day. She walked to the France school surrounded by marshals, wearing a clean dress and a bow in her hair and carrying her lunch pail. Ruby walked slowly for the first few blocks. As Ruby approached the school, she saw a crowd of people marching up and down the street. Men and women and children shouted at her. They pushed toward her. The marshals kept them from Ruby by threatening to arrest them. Ruby would hurry through the crowd and not say a word. The white people in the neighborhood would not send their children to school. When Ruby got inside the building, she was all alone except for her teacher, Mrs. Henry. There were no other children to keep Ruby company, to play with and learn with, to eat lunch with. But every day, Ruby went into the classroom with a big smile on her face, ready to get down to the business of learning. She was polite, and she worked well at her desk, Mrs. Henry said. She enjoyed her time there. She didn't seem nervous or anxious or irritable or scared. She seemed as normal and relaxed, relaxed as any child I've ever taught. So Ruby began learning how to read and write in an empty classroom, an empty building. Sometimes I'd look at her and wonder how she did it, said Mrs. Henry, how she went by those mobs and sat here all by herself and yet seemed so relaxed and comfortable. Mrs. Henry would question Ruby in order to find out if the girl was really nervous and afraid, even though she seemed so calm and confident. But Ruby kept saying she was fine. 
The teacher decided to wait and see if Ruby would keep on being so relaxed and hopeful or if she'd gradually begin to wear down or even decide that she no longer wanted to go to school. Then one morning, something happened. Mrs. Henry stood by a window in her classroom as she usually did, watching Ruby walk toward the school. Suddenly, Ruby stopped, right in front of the mob of howling and screaming people. She stood there facing all those men and women. She seemed to be talking to them. Mrs. Henry saw Ruby's lips moving and wondered what Ruby could be saying. The crowd seemed ready to kill her. The marshals were frightened. They tried to persuade Ruby to move along. They tried to hurry her into the school, but Ruby wouldn't budge. Then Ruby stopped talking and walked into the school. When she went into the classroom, Mrs. Henry asked her what happened. Mrs. Henry told Ruby that she'd been watching and that she was surprised when Ruby stopped and talked with the people in the mob. Ruby became irritated. I didn't stop and talk with them, she said. Ruby, I saw you talking, Mrs. Henry said. I saw your lips moving. I wasn't talking, said Ruby. I was praying. I was praying for them. Every morning, Ruby had stopped a few blocks away from school to say a prayer for the people who hated her. This morning, she forgot until she was already in the middle of the angry mob. <clears throat> when school was over for the day, Ruby hurried through the mob as usual. After she walked a, flu a few blocks and the crowd was behind her, Ruby said the prayer she repeated twice a day, before and after school. Please, God, try to forgive these people, because even if they say those bad things, they don't know what they're doing. So you could forgive them, just like you did those folks a long time ago when they said terrible things about you. I did all my homework. Okay, that's the end of the book. Now I want to ask you some questions. I want to see what you remember from our reading, okay? Okay. Okay. Um, Ruby Bridges was born in a cabin where? Um. Was she born in a cabin in Mississippi, in Texas, in North Dakota, or Alaska? Or in North Dakota. Hmm, no. Right here it says, Ruby Bridges was born in a small cabin near Tylertown, Mississippi. Oh, so it was Mississippi. Mississippi, that's exactly right. Ruby's family moved to New Orleans in what year? And 1961, 1928, 1975, or 1957? 1956. 1957. You were so close. Great job. Okay. Every Sunday, Ruby's family went to KFC? Mm -mm. Walmart? Mm -mm. Kroger? Mm -mm. Church? Mm-hmm. Church. That's exactly right. They went to church. What year did a judge order four black girls to go to two white elementary schools? 1965, 1955, 1950, or 1960? 1950. Mm, no, they moved to New Orleans in 1957, so it was after that. She's saying something, but I can't hear. It's okay. 1955, 1955, 1950, or 1960? Where? Like, what is it? What does it say right there? 1960. 1960. Good you job. You gave me that. Ruby Bridges was sent to first grade at which school? William France Elementary, Barton Elementary, <laughs> Northridge Elementary, or St. Matthew's Elementary School? Uh... I thought it was, I think it was a white school. But what was the name of it? I can't remember. remember. Can you read it? Oh, uh, I can't. I don't William remember. France. Oh. Elementary what? school. Elementary school. Okay. Well, was it white? It was a white elementary. School. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. so I got it right. You did. Okay. Ruby Bridges was escorted to school by federal marshals. Is that true or false? True. Very true. Mm -hmm. The marshals threatened to arrest anyone that tried to keep Ruby from attending school. True or false? True. Mm -hmm. Ruby's teacher was named Mrs. Ford. True. What was her teacher's name? Uh, Mrs. Henry. Mrs. Henry. Ruby yelled at the people who were being mean to her. True or false? True. False. Ruby didn't yell. Uh, it is federal law that all children receive equal access to education. True or false? Um, true. Okay, very good. And what's one word that you could think of to describe Ruby Bridges? Can you think of a word to describe her? Uh, this 
Do you think Ruby Bridges was silly? No. No. Do you think she was brave? Brave. That's what I would say too. Right. It's right there. I'm gonna be You were brave right there? Good job. No, it's just Ruby Foxy's was brave. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay. That's the end of our lesson. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>